at this time, uh, we want to please welcome our governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Governor. Hello, everybody. Good hello, hello. Great to see you. Well, I hope all of you have enjoyed breakfast. I'm starving to death. <laughs> but uh, first of all, thanks for all you do. I mean that really sincerely. Now I'm going to just pull up here where I can sit and halfway talk to you. And uh, let me just say this. So many of you are West Virginians, and some of you are probably not West Virginians. And we're looking for each and every one of you to become West Virginians. But just think. Think about what your contribution is. Think about what West Virginia is sitting on. You know, I'm sitting on this stool, and believe me, B, it's rock solid. To hold me for this long, it's a hell of a stool. <laughs> but this state is a hell of a state, if you'll just step back and think about it. You know, all of us here know that we're sitting on a natural gas play that's unbelievable. It's truly unbelievable. It provides an opportunity for this state that's off the chart, and we know that. Now, along the way, you may start asking, well, where are we on our natural gas hub? It's a great big question. Where are we with China? What happened to China? Where are we with Qatar? And I'll get to that in just a few minutes. I want to proudly tell you just this. And I've said it and said it and said it. And sometimes it resonates and sometimes it falls on deaf ears. But today that I walked in here, Things were pretty doggone tough. Now your industry had some bright moments ahead, maybe, but things were pretty tough. In fact, things were about as dismal as anything I had ever seen in my life. I'm a business guy. You know, for crying out loud, I can read a set of books. And without any question whatsoever, there was nowhere to turn. Now. If we had continued down that path, the ability to be able to do goodness within your industry was going to be limited. The other thing that was going to happen is there was a lot on the outside that we're going to try to take and take and take and take and demotivate, demotivate, demotivate your industry. It had to happen. There was no other way. If we didn't get our steak cooking in every way, shape, form, or fashion, people had no choice but to take from you. That's what would have happened. Now, things are better. Things are lots better. We did pass a road bomb referendum that took off like crazy. And we haven't even seen the impact of what's going to happen there. We made a move to change our image within West Virginia and become a state that recognizes the importance of education. We did it. This isn't something like we've just thought about, we've done it. The other flip side is we made a real life commitment to our, commitment to our veterans. Now, and now today, I have introduced and I am trying so hard to address what I think is the last leg in the stool. And that's this terrible, terrible drug epidemic that is going to cannibalize all states, inclusive of West Virginia. So we have Jim's dream on the table. 
Now, I don't really know for sure that that's the end-all, do-all answer, but I know it's a hell of a lot better than anything we've come up with so far. So, you got a governor. A governor that sits on a stool and talks to you as if I were in your living room because I don't know any other way to do it. You got a governor that doesn't want a thing, never has, doesn't want a thing in the world other than goodness for West Virginia. Now, let me be a little more direct. There are several energy bullets that need to be talked about. One is no question in the state, the revenue numbers are substantially better. There's no question that Trump's energy policy is helping our state, it's helping your industry, it's helping every aspect of what's going on. But there's gotta be a lot more. There's gotta be so much more. There's gotta be a real active encouragement from our side to bring in investors that are willing, willing to put real investment and real effort in what we're doing in West Virginia, and we're working it. And I'll get to more of that in just a second. You've got to have a cooperative, business-friendly DEP that is truly trying to protect our environment in every way, shape, form, or fashion, protect our waters, protect our environment, and at the same time know that we, we as human beings, we have to exist here too and truly be business-wise and environmental and water-wise all at the same time. It works in harmonies the very, very best so often. You know, I'm a nature guy too. I love the outdoors and I love every aspect of nature and absolutely I, there's not a thread in me that would want to see any harm to West Virginia. No way. But let's just think just for a second. What if we were, what if we had a forest that was 50 billion miles long? There's creatures that have to live in that forest and we want to protect them all. And what if we had this gigantic forest and we had all the creatures that are there that we want to look after and protect and then we had a terrible frost in the middle of May or late May? What would happen? The forest becomes a desert. That's all there is to it. Wildlife needs edge effect. Wild life needs edge effect. And from a standpoint of edge effect, that means disturbance or, or disruption of the continuous forest, the continuous desert. Truly, I know a little bit about this. I can tell you our DEP under the, the reign of Austin Caperton is doing a whale of a job. Austin Caperton is a superstar beyond superstars. And I love him totally to death. Now, he's had a little health issues and everything. And, you know, Austin, I think, is a year older than me. And, and he's getting old. <laughs> you know, and I hope he hangs in there. But he's getting old. You know, I salute what we've done, with, you know, in our Department of Transportation with our roads. And I salute, you know, the, you know, the effort of our revenue department. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, there's so many areas I could go, you know, but, but just think, today you have a new commerce secretary. You, now you have a new economic development man in Ed Gaunch and Mike Graney. And they're all over, all over the things that are going to absolutely propel this industry. You've got record ga natural gas production, and you've got absolutely an incredible amount of jobs. I think today, we think there's somewhere close to your contribution of 38,000 jobs within our state. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So, let me tell you this. 
Where do we go? Now this is a bold statement for me. But I'm going to tell you the number one, the number one economic focus, the number one economic focus of my office today is the natural gas hub. Now, it's easy to say just, you know, for me to sit up here and as a politician and say that. And maybe you're thinking, well, really, what, what's going on? What really is going on? Well, I can tell you that there's no question that Trump declared the war on coal over. We declared the war on coal over. Now, and think just with me just one second. What's happened? What's happened? Our coal miners are back to work. They're not back to work to the level that I want to see them back to work, but they're back to work. You know, there's all kinds of things that are happening in this giant pie of economics in West Virginia. Tourism. Tourism should absolutely break the bank as far as absolutely we should explode with tourism to the positive side in West Virginia. And we're moving that way. Chelsea Ruby, unbelievable, unbelievable job that she's doing. There are so many components, whether they be the roads or education or tourism or coal or natural gas or on and on. There are so many things for high tech or universities or on and on that are happening in West Virginia. And as we add up the numbers, the numbers start to really work. Now, we still got a, rock, a lot of rocks to flip over, a lot, a lot of rocks. And we don't want to quit until we've absolutely flipped all the rocks and tried to help as many people as we can possibly help. But now let me go back to the hub. The hub ensures, this is what it does. It ensures job boom in West Virginia forever. It ensures our security forever, the way I see it, forever. Decades and decades and decades of Marcellus that you have in Utica or whatever, and now Rogersville. I mean, it's just unbelievable what can happen with the hub. The hub ensures a petrochemical complex to come to West Virginia. Now, let me tell you just this. And you see I'm twisting around here because I'm always a little uncomfortable about this. The unfortunate thing about this crazy, crazy job that I'm in is it promotes you to have an ego. And I don't want to have that. That's not me. It's just not me. You know, I want to be Jim. But this job forces you to be braggadocious about things, and it's not me. But all I can do is tell you the truth. There is really one driver today that will drive that natural gas hub to, me, to us, and that's my relationship with our president. It's a dream that we would all like to have, and it will come about someday. <laughs> But my relationship with the president is driving it like crazy today. My relationship with Rick Perry is driving it like crazy today. Now, much to your surprise, you would think, well, really, what have they done? What have they really done in regard to all this idea? Or really, what is all the idea? And the idea centers around just this. The idea centers around more energy independence. The idea centers around the, you know, bringing, and, and I, you know, I've always accused of folksy, but bring, bringing the hog confinement buildings where you grow the corn. Think about what I just said. The cheapest natural gas maybe in the world, the most abundant natural gas on the planet, bring the hub to us. 
And in addition to that, what it does is it ensures against a catastrophe of a giant hurricane or whatever it may be, you know, on the Gulf Coast. All of that is driving this to become a reality. Plus the fact that our president, our president knows the economic impact of what this would do. Now, everybody, you know, you hear rocks thrown and all this stuff and everybody concerned about, oh my gosh, the pipelines are going to be finished and when the pipelines are finished, all the natural gas is going to leave and we're threatened by that and everything. I'm not threatened by that. I'm not threatened by that at all. Because the more gas you produce, the bigger we win. But the other thing is just this. I want, I want jobs here. Now, and that's what I am working on with all in me because we can have our cake and eat it too here. We can have pipelines and supply cheap gas to the world or to other states and everything, yay, yay. But we can also have our cake and eat it too and bring that petro manufacturing complex right to us, right to us. Now, yesterday, not three months ago or six months ago, yesterday, yesterday we met with a major player on the hub, not China, not Qatar, another major player on the hub yesterday. And that, that player has already been in contact multiple times with the Department of Energy and Rick Perry and all that conversation is going on. Today, today, our office will be in contact with Rick Perry and we'll be on and on and on about this. We're going to make this happen. This is going to happen. And it's not going to be forever. It's not going to be a pipe dream. It's going to happen. It's really going to happen. So I'll end by just telling you just this. If we want West Virginia, West Virginia to be a land of prosperity, we've got to have all the stuff. We've got to have great schools. We've got we to reward our teachers properly. And we've got to put a stake in the sand that we're going to make a real-life commitment to education. We've got to treat our vets great. We've got to have good roads. For God's sakes of living, when you leave your house and you've got to go to the convenience store, we don't need to be worried about tearing your vehicle up going to and from the convenience store. We've got to fix our secondary roads. We know all this. The problem, the problem has been just this. You didn't have anybody that was a business guy, that didn't want anything, that had a real creative imagination and was willing, willing to put it all out there, boom, and go. Well, now you do. Now you do. And it's working. The biggest thing that we had to do in West Virginia, in addition to that, was change our image. Change what people on the outside really think of us and think of us as that diamond in the rough rather than the backward, ignorant 50th, 50th, 50th. So we've done it. It's getting better. It's getting a ton better. But the last thing I would tell you is just this. And again, I hope you'll, you'll just take this to your heart. I said this 30 years ago. 30 years ago. My dad, Tracy Hilton, Buck Harless, Lawson Hamilton, would maybe be at the Greenbrier for some conference, and they'd all play golf together all the time. And I can remember they'd stand in front of the green bar and oftentimes they'd say, why is it that the people, you know, throw rocks at us? We're, we, we, are, we are very charitable in our thinking. We try to help all people as we can. We employ all kinds of people. We try to do the right things every day. We want the right things for the environment and our, and our state in every way. Why is it the people don't get it? 35 years ago, I said, you know, at that time there was a, I think it was the Mining and Reclamation Association, and I was the, maybe the secretary upon my dad's death. And so, so it wasn't 35 years ago, it was 25 years ago. So anyway, 
I said, why can't we, as West Virginia, be proud of who we are? How, you know, I travel all over the place. We're in a farming business in a big way, and I may be in Iowa City, Iowa, or wherever it may be over the years in the past. And, and I, can you imagine the people in Iowa City, Iowa, not being proud of growing corn? Can you imagine the oil people in Houston not being proud of being in, you know, of, of Texas being in the oil business? This is 25 years ago. Now today, you know, with everything, you know, there could be a little ripple here and there. But why? Why in West Virginia? We have been a natural resource state forever. You have a governor right here that says, we need a hell of a lot more than just natural resources in West Virginia. But you've also got a governor that says just this. We're a natural resource state. We need to absolutely be proud of you, proud of our coal miners. We need to be proud of what we do within this state. That's all there is to it. Your contribution is unbelievable. The miners' contribution has always been unbelievable. If we want to be a land of prosperity, we need to be all-encompassing. No question, tourism and education and everything. And we need to develop all kinds of other industries and spinoffs. But we have got to realize too, we are blessed with the greatest natural resources in the world. And we ought to be damn proud of it. That's all I got to say to you. God bless you. <laughs>